And it's not just about creating content. That's something I want to get clear, right? Creating content, I think, in, in the totality of the conversation, as so far as the meaningful delineation of internet etiquette, more specifically in the fitness space, I think is really low tier when it comes to the scope of understanding the impact of etiquette on your potential opportunities and growth. Create, like it's easy for us to sit here and I don't think it would blow anyone's socks off to be like, all right, if we're just going to do shit posts that are, you know, memes and jokes about trying to put other people down and, and put us ahead, you're going to attract a certain type of audience. It's going to limit your growth. You're going to be, you know, you you might not be surprised that you end up in the state you're in selling certain products to certain people who are drawn to that certain type of behavior. The internet decorum as so far as it can help you move forward in the real world or even in the digital world, you know, commenting or not commenting, tagging or not tagging, reposting versus not reposting. Like one of the things that I see and I've, there's, there's been some cases of this lately and it's something where I, I want the outcome to be positive. Like I want people to, to move, to progress forward. Cause some of it might just be, you know, like if, I have friends who've traveled to mainland China and the social decorum in mainland China is very different than here, right? There, there's, from what I've heard and I have never been, you know, the, the respective personal space is not really a thing. There's so many people. You might notice this if you've ever been to India. Like it's just, it's not good or bad because good or bad is, is relative to the set of norms that you're brought up in. So when you get into the digital space, you know, there's, you get to establish your own norms and the adherence to those norms, which could be an embodiment of values and how you want to be perceived and trying hard to narrow that dissonance adherence to those, those norms, those values will get you exactly where you, where you need to be, not where you want to be. And because what you want is. You, what you want is probably money and cars and fucking to live in Bali or whatever. It's not what you need, right? You need to have a clear fucking head. You need to not be stressed out about this thing that lives rent free in your pocket. That's what you need. And whatever you get as a consequence of getting what you need ends up being more than what you would ever want, right? And I think there's, there's so many layers to this because people are, you know, they're, they're trying to tag their way to the top. Or, or, you know, I, I'm speaking about a very specific case that has happened to me quite recently. And it's like, you know, we work in a unique space with, with people with high social profiles, right? Like we're, we're down in Florida, we work with pro athletes. And one of the conversations we'll have with our L3 students specifically is like, do not under any circumstances tag the athletes you are working with, Right like their their privacy is 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 a virtue to them it's something that they don't have a lot of and we are not in we are there to do a job we are a part of a team we are there to coach and assist them we are not there to gain and if you establish, and here's where you know getting what you want and getting what you need if you play the man and you focus on the relationship there's a decent amount of images on the internet of you and myself with very notable people what people don't realize is that there's probably a hundred times more interactions, maybe more than a hundred times that we've had that you guys will never know about, right? So for what, what the tip of the iceberg that we discussed that you guys see when it comes to our interaction with very high level individuals is only built off of relationships and a superimposition of our relationship with that person, the trust we built and their values around sharing stuff on the internet, not ours. So what you see is been green lit by those people who uh, their values like, Oh, for whatever reason, they, you know, they generate content to further their social presence and their brand as a pro athlete, or they, some of them are very direct. Like, you know, I want to try and help you out. If posting about this would help you, I'm going to post it. And that's their, it's their values that get to, they are the, the, we work for them, but for every one post that you see, you have to understand. And I think the understanding of this is going to, is going to play into the loss aversion psychology conversation that you brought up for every one of those pictures that you might see 
of you know one of us with a pro athlete that was put there by the discernment or good graces or values of that athlete and co-signed on that and brought to the table by them, never asked for a pitcher or anything. Everyone's very like, there's an unspoken etiquette to working in this space. And what you need to understand is the opportunities come faster and, and closer between if you can exercise this discernment. So, if you operate like this is the last pro athlete you're ever going to see, it might be the last pro athlete you're ever going to see. Because for every one pitcher of one of us with a pro athlete, there's probably, I don't know, if I can do the math, maybe 250 times more interactions that we've had with athletes that you guys have no idea about, right? So what you see on the internet is a small representation of what they want to, to the, you to see of us interacting with the world. But there's a lot more to be had. There's a lot more to be gained as far as relationship, trust, reputation, which is big. And reputation takes, you know, a lifetime to build, but only seconds to tear down. That should be like a huge, 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 huge focus. If your, if your internet presence doesn't have a filter of how could this affect my reputation, you need to put that at the absolute top of your fucking filtering list before you hit that send button. I cannot tell you how, and, and this is speaking from being on the other side of people who maybe don't act with a consistent set of values on the internet as they do in real life. I can't tell you what it's done to my perception of some people and the opportunities that they've lost from damaging their reputation by not moving correctly on the internet, right? Like you and I are in positions where we need people and we're so lucky to have the people in the prescript circle all over the world that I don't hesitate for a second to be like Dom Codrick, level three coach came in from the Czech Republic. One of my close friends was heading over there and he needed a treatment table. He, uh, Brad Watson, Cairo friend of ours back from school, just saw him in Cologne a few weeks ago. And, and Brad knows that we have people all over. He trusts, and now Brad's not like a social media guy. Now Brad is a guy that when I got into practice and even last going off in school, he's a guy, when I said earlier, I do this to gain the respect of those people who you've never heard of. Brad Watson is probably a guy you've never heard of, but if you ask any person in a particular pro sport who he is, they know exactly who the fuck he is. Why? Because he's built an unbelievable reputation in real life. He asked me, hey, I'm going to the Czech Republic. I go, no problem. Dom Codry, got you sorted, whatever you need. Dom brought a table down with an hour and a half drive into Prague when he was over there for a, a world championship of a particular sport and no problem. Like, and I feel such a confidence of being like, yep, Dom, this is now Brad and Dom, colleagues connected. Oper those opportunities to meet and network and, and be able to, 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 to mutually benefit are so unbelievably ever present in the real world. And so when you're going through and you're thinking about your reputation and you're creating content or more specifically, you're thinking about tagging someone in something, maybe it's someone you don't know or never met. And y your focus is on building a social network rather than a real network of people who you can call that you've met in real life, that you've been connected through and vetted through trusted sources. Know that those are the opportunities you're losing. Every opportunity you want is on the table with every single reshare, post, tag, whatever. And it's hard to see because you can get blinded by the immediacy of the, the dopamine hits of the likes. You know what you're trading? You know what you're, you're trading your reputation for numbers on a screen, like you said. And do you know what your reputation can get you? Do you know where it can go? Do you know where it can lead you if you know how to fucking exercise an ounce of discernment? You don't know. I don't know. I try to, and I'm sure there's opportunities I've left on the table, right? I'm sure there's times on the internet where I've done something and someone, an agent, a player who may have thought about reaching out, who has heard of me goes, no, I don't like the way that guy moves. I'm sure of that. And I think about that every single time I post. I don't, don't near you, we, you can attest to this. We talk about social media volume of posting and frequency for years. But my frequency of posting has dropped precipitously over the last three to four years. The opportunities that you know, we've had as a company, you and I as professionals, has grown exponentially. Exponentially. The amount of rooms that we can get asked to go into 
in private. The amount of the amount you and I have experienced just professionally or in, as friends over the last three years is multiple orders of magnitude more impactful to my life than the six, seven, eight years before that that we knew each other. And one of the correlations is I am much more specific and I think much more about my reputation. I think much more about my social etiquette online and how that may or may not open or close doors for me. And and I know I still get it wrong. I know I still post stuff out of ego, out of instinct, out of reaction. And I know I lose opportunities as a consequence. But if you can think, if you before, like you people do not, res and respect is another thing I wanted to talk about. Because <laughs> people do not respect the power of this, right? This fucking 6.1 inch rectangle that you have in your pocket, you need to respect the power of that and its ability to impact your life. What, like, what is in your hand right now, if you're listening to this on Spotify or YouTube, subscribe. What is in your hand? is is a is a catalyst it's nuclear right like its ability to change the course of your life is like imagine if you were walking around with the nuclear launch codes and you could just fucking you know send pyongyang back to the fucking stone ages you could set your life back to the stone ages or you could illuminate your a future that you have no idea how good it can be and you, people take that they take that responsibility at their peril and you watch people just, they wonder why they're not in the position. It's like, look, like I, I think of Killian often with this in, in this conversation, because here's a guy, congratulations, Killian, taking on assistant performance director role at House of Athlete Tampa. Unbelievable. How often does Killian post? Oh, man. He's in the stories, but the actual posts, like, phew, like quarterly. Quarterly, right? And it's like... Do you ever see him play in the mud online? Ever? No. He's right? he's one and that I think leverages online very well. Very and the the way that I've seen that he does it is not a way that anyone would see because I I see it from hearing about it from talking to him is that he's talking to people on the internet. He's not mm -hmm. posting, right? He's he's not getting attention to people through his posts. Maybe he's getting, you know, some notoriety through networks and connections, but that's a point I was thinking of as, as you were speaking is the value of an interaction on the internet. There's high value and then there's low value interactions. One, like you're saying, like if, if you or I to work with a specific player with a large following, uh, if I were to get a picture of us that maybe they didn't even know about and I were to post it and I were to tag them in it and kind of, I, I think it is, is more like clout chasing. If I'm trying to leech off their network, that's a very low value interaction. It's like no different than me running into this guy in the supermarket and asking for an autograph, right? It's, it's, it's a very low value interaction on the internet in terms of value, perceived value even. It's like, yes, people see that you're with this person, but like I'm trying to take something from them in that interaction as opposed to a very high value interaction. It's not going to happen based off of of social media, social networking. It's going to happen in person, right? If, if you make a change for that player and you leave an impact on them and you can positively impact them through that interaction that you had, that there just so happens to be a picture of and say they're the one that posts that and they shout you out or they're, they're the one that's saying like, hey, like I fuck with this guy. That's a high value interaction because now it went from you clout chasing someone with the network to someone that knows that they have a network and knows that they have swing and power online vouching for you because of what you were to them. That's a high value interaction. And I've seen, that's what I've seen with Killian is, is he can create these high value interactions because of the way that he moves outside of the, the, the social media eye, right? Because of the conversations he has, because of the work that he does. And that's why he's more successful at, at leveraging social media as a platform because they're higher value interactions.